As you can see, we are 100% done with construction. We went for the garage feel, and I think we nailed it. Um, we're going to do a quick 10, 15 minute presentation. Um, we will talk to you about the, uh, the garage, basically, the space here, why we chose the West End, um, some of the beers that we're going to be launching here. I'll ask uh, Adam, our brewmaster, and Peter, our head brewer, to join on stage to talk about that. And then, uh, basically, the future of what we want this space to be, um, and kind of what we're thinking. So, uh, and then after that, for anyone who hasn't gotten a tour, just come find really anyone who works here, but uh, me, Jeff, raise your hand, Joel, there he is, really anyone, we'd love to show you around. Um, so <clears throat> we originally, uh, the, the idea for the garage originally started when we were thinking about expanding our barrel aging program. And um, we were winning some awards for our barrel aged beers. The, uh, the bourbon barrel draft to kill won a gold at JBF. And then soon after that, laissez faire, uh, a um, Cabernet barrel aged wheat wine won a silver at the World Beer Cup. And so we, tr we, we wanted to make more barrel aged beers, right? And we wanted to make some sours as well. Um, so we were originally just looking for warehouse space. And uh, there's a lot of warehouse space in a lot of different places. Um, but we, as we were looking around, we started thinking, we really need to do this in a Monday night way. And our purpose, which you can see on the screen here, is to exist, or is to deepen human relationships over some of the best beer in the country. So the challenge for us then came to, uh, to be, how do we deepen human relationships over some of the best beer in the country while expanding our barrel program? opening a second space. Um, you can move forward. Uh, so that led us eventually to the West End, uh, where you are now. Um, we are in Southwest Atlanta. Uh, we, <clears throat> we were courted by other cities, other states, to build a second brewery, um, but Atlanta's really kind of at the heart of who we are. We love this city, we love um, everything that is going on in this city right now, and we wanted to continue to be a part of that. And um, the West End has kind of traditionally been an underserved area when it comes to commercial development. Um, there are some really great, vibrant neighborhoods here in Southwest Atlanta, but there aren't a ton of great, amazing places for those people to hang out. So, we're like, well, we need warehouse space, and they can hang out here. So, that's what we're doing. Um, it also helps that we are right on uh, Marta Line. Uh, it's about a five minute walk. And you saw the belt line outside too. Um, little known fact, our current brewery is actually on the belt line as well, although it will be the last portion of the belt line to be completed. Uh, but eventually, when I am 80, <laughs> we'll be able to walk between breweries on the belt line. Um, here we also have a pretty unique opportunity to be a part of a larger development. So while we were one of the first to sign on here, um, we've been joined now by Wild Heaven, uh, who will be in the white brick building over here, ASW Distillery, uh, Banyan New Roots Brew Pub, um, and then some, some other local purveyors, Due South Pickles, Honeysuckle Gelato. So um, there's an opportunity to make this a real destination for Atlanta. Uh, going along with our purpose, which is kind of has been expressly said to deepen human relationships, um, we wanted to do something unique with this space uh, from the start. So we started this initiative, 100K in 100 Days, uh, and it's our goal to help nonprofits uh, who are doing great things in our city raise $100,000 in our first 100 days of operation. Um, and doing that by really using the resources that we have, which are space, which you're standing in, beer, which you're drinking, and people, which you're talking to. Um, so we, uh, we so far have found these 19 organizations that we're actually donating um, space for their fundraisers, beer, and staff, and we're continuing to kind of go through applications. We've gotten almost 200 applications from different nonprofits around the state. Um, so look out for more on that. 
Um, and then I'm going to pass it over to Brewmaster Adam Bishop to talk a little bit more about the physical space itself. Seriously, hate microphones. I'd rather yell at you all. It's kind of what I'm used to. Um, he gets it. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the space that you're standing in. That's that should be what uh, Friday. I think we'll be done Friday. So <laughs> everybody, feel free to just tell everyone you. Uh, so what we've done, um, it's it's kind of hard. It's rough to see, but over here, this room that you're coming through, this will be our cool ship room. There will actually be a door here because, I don't know, I feel like having every pe person who comes here walk through the cool ship room might, it might be a contamination hazard. But anyway, we're gonna, it's gonna be this 10 foot long, or 10 foot wide, 12 foot long table, you know, about a foot deep that's gonna hold a bunch of wort that we're gonna let uh, get soured here by good old fashioned Atlanta air. Um, so we're, we're doing a couple of things to, to, to make Atlantic, Atlanta air a little bit better for that. One is, is outside we're gonna be planting an expansive urban orchard. I, I wish I could tell you every fruit that will be growing here, but it's such a long list that I'll just suffice to say it's a bunch. Um, and that's gonna be happening out here. And we're actually gonna, there's a ventilation system here that we're actually gonna force air into the room. So, the whole idea is is uh, wild yeast and bacteria are going to grow on these fruits. They're going to float around in the air, and we're going to suck them into this room and make them eat some sugar that we made. So pretty simple in that sense. Uh, behind you, right over here, we've got uh, two barrel aging rooms that we're going to dedicate to sours. Uh, the one here on the left first is actually going to be the primary fermentation room. So it's a lot of space because the barrels are going to be foaming up and making a big mess, and that's what that's there for. The second one is actually gonna be for beers that are going through the aging process. Then behind that, that giant open area that looks like a really cool place to hang out, well, it will be really cool because that's where we're gonna do all of our tank fermentations. Uh, our head brewer here, Peter, is headed to France in like, what, two weeks? No, three weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks to pick up, uh, to go inspect our French oak fooders that we're gonna install in here. So the whole place is about barrel aging, wood aging beers, and we're gonna have a little bit of stainless in there. We're gonna bring our bottling line down here to help make things a little bit easier for ourselves. Um, you can kind of see the space. Uh, you know, you really should go through all the slides before I talk, because I have no idea what order they're in. <laughs> That's just how that goes, guys. Sorry, super unfair. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a nice little overview of the orchard. You can kind of see, um, honestly, now, honestly, my favorite thing about this place is it's going to be really cool in here, right? It's going to be really cool to have this deck out on this back wall here overlooking the belt line. But to be able to sit down at a table in the middle of an orchard and drink a beer that came from the microorganisms that grew in that field, that's, yeah, I mean, to me, it doesn't get any better than that. Like, I feel like you're kind of doing it from scratch, almost like a farmer for beer. Um, <laughs> uh, more details, this is going to be the, uh, the area right back here, I believe, the private area, is that correct? Yeah. yeah you want to tell them about that? Yeah, so this is just going to be another uh, courtyard kind of behind this wall here um, that will be part of our private event space, which is through that door, um, but it will double up uh, when we are not open as kind of overflow area, um, and we're doing some more fruit trees and things there. Oh wow, that rendering sucks. <laughs> so you'll be hanging out here. We can, we can move on. <laughs> yeah, these are just some quick renderings to kind of flash through to give you a, a sense of uh, the vibe here um, for those who aren't, who don't have the vision for <laughs> this space yet. Um, we will have Godzilla playing at all times. Uh, I'm gonna bring uh, Pete Kylie up here to talk about uh, some of the beers we're going to be launching with and some, then some of the beers coming into the future. Hey Woo! Oh my god, everyone, stop cramping. Please stop shouting. <laughs> uh, 
Um, this is something I really traditionally don't like doing because it makes me feel like I have to succeed and our team has to succeed. But I'm going to give you guys a rundown of essentially the vision for the next two years since a lot of these beers are going to be made very slowly. So if you want to hit up the list, all right. So to begin with, there's a lot of these things, don't really look at order, but think that some of these beers will be available for launch. So the first one, we have a Brett, a little bit of a Bruxellinus, it's going to be a Belgian uh, strong, aged in Sauv Blanc barrels, and uh, from there we have a Brett table beer, and then Brett IPA. Brett, of course, as we know, does lend itself well to funky beers. We could not do it at our original facility. I remember Adam always told me, hey, I love that idea. How about you help Newt Gingrich colonize the moon and you can make it there? Because we're not doing it here at Traybert Avenue. So, guess what guys, we're on the moon today. This is exciting. Where's Newt? Yeah, Newt's not here guys. We don't want Newt here. So, not really in any particular order, you'll see the next one will be a port barrel aged sour stout with blackberries. I like the idea of a sour stout, not aggressively sour. Fruit will be a big play when we go moving forward with this because Georgia is a very ag state. The fact that we wouldn't be tapping into that would kind of be an injustice to what Georgia's about, so you'll see a lot of that. Next we have the Bourbon Barrel Imperial Stout aged with vanilla beans. Wow, how basic. Oh my god. But at the same time, <laughs> we kind of thought about it from three different ways. We're like, why not do a stout that we just play around with? So we have the idea of Bourbon Barrels. Next, we got lucky to work with some people in um, Bissell Maple Farms where they do a lot of their you know, bourbon barrel aged maple. So we'll have an Imperial Stout aged on vanilla beans and then we'll also do a rum barrel that will be aged with coconut and vanilla beans. The Bissell will have a little bit of uh, coffee in there. We always like working with our friends um, over at Bad Orphan and Bronson. They've helped us be responsible for certain beers like Tears of My Enemies and Bedhead and pretty much anything that has coffee. It keeps one of our founders, Joel, constantly stirring because he's a coffee addict. From there, we have an Imperial Breakfast Brown that was designed by um, one of my brewers, uh, Ryan Cooley. Where's Ryan? There's Ryan right there. Ryan had spent so much time on this beer and I couldn't be more proud of him. That beer is gonna be baller. It's already, we've already tasted it. It's, it's, on, it's on point. From there, we have um, a sour double barrel drafty killer. All right, this one I have to explain to you guys. So last year we made a lot of BBDK. And then we had some rum barrels. So I asked Adam, I was like, is it cool if I put it in the rum barrels? Let's we'll see how it develops. He's like, sure. So we do that. And that year we took some of that beer out and put it into a cask. And we did it for, I think it was Secret Stash Bash, where we um, ended up getting third place for uh, one of our casks. But it wasn't tasting right. So I pulled a quiet audible and intentionally soured it. And now it's turned into something that is so nuanced yet complex that I feel nervous about debuting, but at the same time, I'm really excited for you to try it. We're gonna put that with some tart cherries. And if you wanna hit the next slide, Jeff. So these are some beers that will absolutely be happening. Remember that we're making slow beer here. Some of these things might hit the timeline that we want. They could enter the market when we want, but at the same time, they're not gonna go anywhere unless they're perfect, because first impressions are kind of the most important is why I hate that y'all are here today because <laughs> we're really, we're nailing this one guys. <laughs> we got this palette right here. Um, so to begin with, we got some awesome cognac barrels um, from Hennessy. Nice enough guys, I actually went in France in a few weeks, we gave them the barrel numbers that we got and they'll be giving us cognac to age orange peels and a little bit of vanilla in, that way we can reintroduce it into that beer. And then we have a series of barrel aged fruited saisons. Where's Josh Johnson? He's outside eating cheese, classic. <laughs> classic Josh Johnson. He's just trying to get to know, you know the, the local cheese. Michael Flora, it's his thing. But um, so Saison's really, a lot of people have trouble whether you're an account or you're a consumer. Some people think that Saison's don't really have legs. They're not really the most popular thing right now. Listen to me now, we are going to change that. So the idea of us being a very ag heavy state, so many different fruits to work with. We already have proof of concept on a few of them. You'll be tasting them when we launch. We'll go bigger once we get the ability for people to say, hey, this is worth your time and money. But we'll have a couple of those coming out. And then we have a bourbon barrel aged imperial scotch ale, i.e. draftier kilt. 
BBDK is good. You know, we made a lot of it and it went well. And I feel like people were like, oh, it's just there. So we're going to make a small batch of it that's going to be a lot bigger. Much bigger in alcohol. Honestly, I, I couldn't be more excited about that beer. There we have, um, after that, we have a true lacto Berliner Weiss. And I say true lacto because I will say that in the past we have worked in the realm of a kettle sour. We've had to. We can't be doing this stuff at our original facility. Here, we can do whatever we want. So we'll be really playing with those games, you know, different bugs, different tanks dedicated. Pretty much, I'd say about 70% of every beer that will come out of here will be barrel fermented, as well as barrel aged. So we'll have some, you know, unique dynamic store flavors. From there, we'll be using a lot of different fruits. So kind of, we already have knocked in the recipe. It's just, what fruits do we want to play with? What do the people like? We might even ask you guys at some point for your opinion. Will it be taken into consideration? Yes. <laughs> From there, we have a port barrel aged Belgian quad. Right now, we are exclusively working with um, Kennesaw State University to have some of their interns come become our interns. And one of them right now is from our intern, Alex, who's working on an awesome recipe. The next, we have a mixed culture grisette. So we have a big old bear on one of our um, ferment, uh, excuse me, one of our grain silos. So talking with Jonathan, I really wanted to have a grisette. You know, just, you know, yeah, I know, it's stupid. Hey, hey, you guys get up on this pallet, all right? Get, get off your high horses. No, but so the Grisette's a, personally a beer style that I love. I think it's really applicable in so many forms. You can use, you know, locally sourced wheat that we have here in Georgia. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. And then a series of fruited and spiced gozes. So we've made gozes in the past, kettle soured, but one of our brewers, her name's Sarah Green, Sarah Green, yeah, she came from Goose Island, and there's a lot of things that you can't do there, i.e. if it's not a stout, you can't do it. Um, so uh, she had this amazing idea for grilling up some limes and doing some like chili salt and a goza. I was like, you just want a margarita. And she's like, no, but I want it to be a beer. So we had some really cool projects coming with that. And then on the last one on this list is uh, Tears of My Enemies. Tears of My Enemies was a beer that I'm glad it came to be, it wasn't supposed to be, but now that we have proof of concept, thank you for that, by the way. Anyone else out there? We're gonna play with that one a lot. So, in next Tuesday, I'm going to Kentucky to pick up a lot of different barrels. So we'll be doing scotch barrels, um, we have bourbon barrels, and our friends at ASW are nice enough to gift us their apple brandy barrels. So, it's time to explore what Tears of My Enemies will be. I would say expect that in 2018. But beyond that, one thing that I really want to get across to you guys is that this is not a traditional brewery. Don't think of this as a brewery. When I think of what the future of the garage will be, um, I think of it as like a winery. I personally love that idea because I used to make wine, but you know, sometimes we'll be buzzing. Sometimes we'll be making beer around fruit or we'll be doing cool ships because it's cold. But really, everything here is going to be a little bit slower, a little bit more deliberate. We've had the time, we spent so much time, as Joel would always tell me, he's like, you have to establish the foothold to climb the mountain. We did not get to have a lot of fun in the beginning as brewers at Money Night Brewing. We worked on making beers that kept the lights on, developing our core. The whole time, we had amazing ideas. We just couldn't always expand on them. Now we finally come to that point where we get to really take the time to be deliberate, to be methodical, to work with the right people, to you know, have access now that we're even like a name. Before people would be like, Monday who? But now they're like, oh, Monday night, or Tuesday night brewing, whatever you are. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you something. So from there, you're gonna see equipment here that doesn't really belong in a traditional brewery. We'll have a lot of different grape applications. We'll be working with different fruit vendors, different wineries, different vineyards. So as we, you see this place kind of expand, it's gonna take on a different feel, but it's something that we at Monday Night Brewing are extremely proud of and, uh, excuse my language, but we have busted our ass to get to this point. So I really hope that you guys will support us and be on board, and at any point, if you have any constructive criticism, <laughs> I would love to hear it, because at the same time, we make beer for Georgia, and we don't just say it, but really, we make it for you guys. You guys have been a good compass for us. We listen, we really do. So, with that said, wish us luck. Cheers. Woo. All right. Thank you, Pete. One more thing. Uh, we are going to be moving all of our beers, uh, core beers, to cans. 
Uh, and this will be some of the lineup. We've been uh, working on this in secret for the past three months or so. Um, you'll notice there are only four core beers here. And if you flip to the next slide, that's because we're going to be adding two core beers, which you have tasted today. Yeah. Umbrella with Dr. Robot will be, uh, will be additions to our core lineup. We're going we're gonna, to um, retire iPatch Ale and Nerd Alert for now. Um, and this new look, new packaging should give us a lot more flexibility moving forward to rotate beers in and out. Um, you know, we, we've uh, been very deliberate up to this point and we want to continue to be deliberate moving forward, but we also realize that uh, we need to innovate. Um, and so look for more beers more often from us. Um, the specs on Umbrella and Dr. Robot, uh, Umbrella is 4.7%, really sessionable, um, hazy, with some really fun hops, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Mandarin of Bavaria. Dr. Robot's a refreshingly tart fruit beer uh, with blackberries and lemons. Uh, after that, uh, this fall, we're gonna launch a, a rotating seasonal dust bunny. Um, we did one test batch of it in the tasting room that lasted about two days. Uh, so this is gonna come back, it's a hazy IPA, and then we're gonna redo our um, our sampler pack to include Umbrella, um, and then last but not least, we're even moving the Black Tie series to cans. So Bourbon Barrel Drafty Kilt will be the first up this fall, um, and uh, look for more beers after that. Um, for those of you who are members of the media and press, this is all off the record. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Um, I'll send out a Dropbox link with some images of these cans and this PowerPoint presentation after uh, I get home. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to grab us. We'll be, we'll be hanging out for a while, so get some more beer, put the music on. Are there any, are there any questions that, might, that everyone might be interested in listening to? Do you have a target opening date? Target opening date, should have covered that. Uh, yeah. Let, Late September is the target. Brew house size over here. Brew house size is TBD. It's going to be small. Um, we, frankly, will still probably be producing some work over at the old facility. I'm trucking it down. And, uh, you know, we're trying to make as much room as possible for aging <laughs> right now. So we'll see. Anything else? All right. We're good.